Hey guys, it's been about six days since I posted a battle. Uh, I've been sick lately and I still am, unfortunately. So I feel like I had to post. So here we have a very special battle against a trainer that's not an ordinary trainer. <laughs> Actually has a YouTube channel himself, 33,000 subscribers. Uh, pretty big channel if you ask me. I never really got to verse a popular person before, so here we go. Um, let me also include that this was 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and I failed pretty bad uh, as, as you can see by the lobby t here it's actually 5 on 6 I forgot to put in my 6 freaking Pokemon <laughs> that is such a fail so it's gonna be 5 on 6 but I don't really care you know damn well I'm gonna put up a fight anyway Things probably would have went different if I added in Azumarill, but it, it's alright. I mean, it was a fun game overall, but I'm going to lead off with Jolteon going for the Shadow Ball because I predicted him to switch out into Exedrill, expecting me to go for the Volt Switch, which is pretty obvious. But he actually is going to stay in and go for the Overheat, and he reveals that he has a Citrus Berry, so I thought I could survive. And he gets the crit, which is just... Wow, that's just so fucked up. <laughs> anyway, not his fault, it's all good. Not too sure if it even mattered anyway. It is overheat, it's pretty powerful. Although it did get uh, a little nerfed, its base power went down, so I might have survived had it not been a crit. So here's Gyarados, which I can't touch too well. I go for the Quiver Dance, knowing he had to switch. But uh, yeah, I can't do too much. All I really have is... Uh, Fury Dance and Bug Buzz is an attacking move. Uh, Bug Buzz would hit pretty decent, but uh, just not worth taking a Waterfall. So I'm gonna go into Fortress because he can take the Waterfall and then I can set up the Stealth Rock safely. So he's probably gonna have to switch or he could set up the Dragon Dance. Uh, he could do either or, but he's gonna end up switching. And he's gonna go into his Rotom, which is pretty predictable. Probably going for the Overheat or scaring me to switch out and go for the Volt Switch. That's pretty popular tactic. I usually do it myself. So, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to switch. It's way too early in game to start over predicting and yeah, that's how I just lost Jolteon. So I'm gonna go into Florgs now because I can pretty much eat up any special attacking hit he's got. He's gonna go for the Volt Switch as predicted. So he's gonna switch and he will be going into Exedrill, I'm assuming to get the Rapid Spin off, which would be a good play. So he reveals he is the Mold Breaker, and I believe I go for the Energy Ball here because, you know, like I said, it was 8 o'clock in the morning. My brain is a little fucked up, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I could have sworn I saw Air Balloon, so I went for the Energy Ball, thinking he had the Air Balloon because... Almost everyone that carries Exedrill has the air balloon on it, and it didn't even have it, so... I'm just fucking up all over this battle so far. Not specifically the battle, more of the whole six Pokemon missing thing. Yeah, he's gonna take out the stuff rocks off as predicted. I'm gonna go into Fortress, because I can pretty much take anything he's got to throw at me. He's gonna go for the Earthquake, and yeah, I pretty much eat that up. And I'm gonna go for Earthquake myself. I don't think he expected that coming. So that is almost gonna take him out. And it's pretty obvious he's gonna have to switch now, because I did almost all his health. And that's his spinner, so I'm gonna predict him switching out, and I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch as he goes into his Jerotum. So that is a really good play, at least I thought so, I mean... I think I should have laid down the Stealth Rocks right there, because his Gyarados late game just really screwed me over. So, I'm going to go back into Florgs, because it has very low hit points, and I, I really need both my walls alive. Due to me, um, right off the bat, having five Pokemon, I really need to have everyone alive. Well, I have four now. <laughs> so, it's actually pretty fun, I'm not going to lie, it's challenging. It's very challenging. <laughs> Um, so here's Gyarados, uh, I really expected him to switch, that's good, I'm going to go for the Wish and Protect, I need Florgs at a good amount of health to wall everything out. So that works out perfectly, he can't hit me so I'm going to go for the Protect as he goes for the Waterfall. Okay so 
With leftovers and wish, I'm gonna get almost all my health back, which is really good. Uh, Florgs needs that. So, he's gonna switch. He actually predicts me to switch, I believe, so... He's gonna go into Rotom as I go into Fortress, which is a really good play for him. Except, I'm actually gonna switch the tables on him. I'm actually gonna overpredict him. And I think he's gonna go for the Volt Switch to try to trick me here. So, <laughs> I actually stay in. Uh, he was expecting me to switch. Except he actually does a crap load of damage, which is really unfortunate, but it's okay. He's gonna go into his Gengar, as I go for my Volt Switch, so overall I kinda um, outplayed him this turn. So, I'm gonna end up switching into my Volt Corona. I have the Quiver Dance, and this Volt Corona actually has Roost and Leftover, so it's actually sort of a bulky, uh, offensive Volt Corona in a way. Um, unfortunately, he's gonna, uh, poison me with the sludge bomb, but, eh, I, I guess it's okay. So, now that I got some special defense up, I know I can take another sludge bomb, so I'm gonna go for the roost here. And, the toxic is really screwing me over, but, what can you do? <laughs> so, at least I'm able to survive that, and take a look at Fury Dance. The animation is such badass. That is fucking epic. Uh, pretty much a worthless crit, I'm pretty sure of it. It was boosted, not to mention stab. 80 base power, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't really matter there. And, um, yeah. I'm at 5 hit points, and here comes his... <laughs> it looks like he raged here, I think he's not playing no more fucking games. He went straight to his mega just to overkill my fucking Volcarona here. <laughs> so he's gonna go straight for his mega and go for the bullet punch. And this is the reason why I do not have Swarm on my Volcarona. Ready? Here's why. <laughs> Flame Body. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Just crippled his Mega. I just fucking crippled it. That burn just destroyed his attack. And now I'm free to go into Pinsir. I know I can take uh, Ice Punch. I can survive. I can go for the return, which is changed into Flying Type, which is his weakness. And I can pretty much take out his Mega. Perfect. He is faster, so as I saw, he's gonna go for the Ice Punch and do half my hit points, but my return is just gonna obliterate him. So, really, really good. Uh, this battle is pretty fucking epic. <laughs> so, here's Gyarados, like I mentioned at the beginning, the one that's really gonna screw me over due to Intimidate alone. The ability to Intimidate just really screws me over alone. <laughs> Luring my attack, pretty much forcing me to switch. It's kind of annoying. And it's gonna force me to switch into Florgs, and it's just gonna have me sacrifice Florgs, which is really bad. So, he's gonna go for the waterfall again, and unfortunately, that's gonna finish me off. And from here, I'm gonna go right back into Pinsir and go for the return, I believe. Unfortunately, this Gyarados is a more of a bulky set Gyarados. I haven't really seen any of these. It's pretty interesting. He carries a Toxic, and now that I look back, I probably should have went for the Swords Dance and maybe take him out. But then again, he, he could just switch out and just keep throwing out Intimidate and just, yeah, not even Swords Dance would have helped. So he's going to switch out into Exadrill just to sacrifice it, I guess, which is a decent play because that means Toxic will do more damage and, you know, it, he, he's pretty much just scared of Pinsir at the moment. And at the same time, the more Pokemon he sacrifices, the more Intimidate he gets to get off on my Pinsir, which means I have to sacrifice my Fortress right now, get back out Pinsir. It's basically a... <laughs> a stall fest right now. Um, as long as his other Pokemon survive and I get the Intimidate on my Mega Pinsir, I'm screwed. Uh, that's basically his plan, which is pretty freaking smart. Um, not too much I can do about it. So, if I get this Gyarados out of the way, I could really save my ass, but it's looking really hard right now. I'm down to my last two Pokemon. I'm not sure to say my very last, so... Yeah. <laughs> 
so down goes fortress I'm down to my mega pincer and that is really it um I don't I won't say who wins yet it's you know mega pincer is just so badass <laughs> I wouldn't sleep on it so he's gonna switch out as expected and go into his Rotom and since it's part since it goes into flying type it's not very effective <laughs> not very effective my fucking ass did you see the damage I just fucking did so let's go for the stab quick attack flying type not very effective I don't fucking think so so down goes Rotom so another Pokemon goes down to Mega Pinsir things a fucking boss so you already know what's coming not he really outplayed me here I gotta give him props on this one Obviously, I'm gonna go for the Earthquake. He's part rock. That's a one hit KO. No, he's gonna go into Gyarados type flying, so he's immune to Earthquake. Not to mention, Intimidate goes off. So, that's game. Um, go check out his channel. His link is in the description. I don't think I have to say much more. <laughs> this guy knows what he's doing. He's a total badass. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I got to battle you, though, bro. A really good game. Not too sure what will happen if I had my Azumarill there, but I still had fun. Alright guys, hope you all enjoyed.